Nightwing can fly now. Now, before you go all keyboard warrior, see how this plays out, because it's actually kind of cool and shows Nightwing character more than anything. This is a follow-up to the storyline involving Blockbuster's daughter, the one whose soul he sold so that he can gain his power. It's time for Nightwing and the Titans to get involved. This is Comic Storian. I make audio dramas to help you catch up, and today we're looking at Nightwing issues 101 to 104. If you enjoy this, make sure you pick up the book yourself to support the industry. The Demon Horde bows before their master, but Neron doesn't seem pleased. Tell me, he commands. The demons bow lower, explaining how they were defeated by the hero known as Nightwing and his super-powered dog. That they failed to acquire the soul of a nine-year-old girl, the daughter of Blockbuster. Neron cocks an eyebrow at them. A puppy? He questions, turning away, knowing that Nightwing has no powers. But he surrounds himself with powerful friends, including the daughter of Trigon, one of the most powerful demons in hell. I don't want to annoy Raven's father. We need earthly agents to recover the soul that is mine, Neron says. A short time later, he appears in the kingdom of Latvia, where the grinning man has taken the form of their king. What can I do for you? The grinning man asks. And after Neron declines to see the bodies the new king has hidden away in his chambers, Neron offers the grinning man more time on earth before his soul is condemned to earth. All he needs to do is retrieve a girl and murder her. She is the daughter of Blockbuster. Her name is Olivia Desmond. Elsewhere, Olivia is racing through the woods, chased by a powerful sorceress who threatens to defeat her. There's nowhere left to run, the sorceress says as she corners Olivia. But Olivia is not alone, proclaiming that the kingdom is protected by her as she draws a magical sword. The Knight of the Realm and her mighty steed! She calls out as Garth appears at her back in the form of a green unicorn. Freaking nay, foul sorceress, he shouts. And Raven stares at her boyfriend. Excuse me, foul sorceress? Garth immediately begins to backpedal on his comment, explaining that he just got swept up in the game. Luckily, he is saved by the arrival of Nightwing and Bitewing, the puppy that Nightwing took in a while ago, and the dog rushes to see Olivia. Aw, she doesn't talk anymore? Olivia says as she hugs and pets the dog, and Nightwing smiles. No, I'm pretty sure that was a one-time thing. While Garth tries to figure out how the dog talked at all, Nightwing turns to Raven and questions her about the secluded house's defenses. The three heroes then head to the house while Olivia continues to play in the yard, Nightwing informing his friends that a body was recently discovered beneath the ruins of the Titan's tower, and that the Titans are headed there to learn which of their students didn't make it out in time during Deathstroke's attack on Titan's Academy. Go, I'll look after Olivia, Garth tells his friends. So a short time later, the heroes all gather in New York, where the ruins of Titan's Tower lay. Starfire, who was the headmistress of the Academy, learns where the body is located beneath the rubble. The rest of the heroes push the police and construction workers back as she burrows beneath the rubble, lifting the building off of the body. She's desperate to learn which of her students they had left behind. Nightwing leaps down into the darkness with Raven, where they discover the body. Who is it? Do you recognize them? Starfire calls out, still worried that she failed her students. But Nightwing and Raven are shocked to discover the body of the King of Latvana. Okay, this makes no sense, Nightwing whispers. The heroes quickly remove the body so the Starfire can return the rebel to where it lay. A short time later, Amanda Waller arrives, angry with the heroes for disturbing the crime scene. Yeah, it was either that or dropped 20 tons of building back onto him. Nightwing explains, telling her that he thoroughly investigated the area and photographed the scene before they moved in on the body. I'll be happy to share all of my findings with whomever you need me to talk to, Waller. But she shakes her head, explaining that a special investigator has been sent from the Latvana Embassy to deal with the matter. A short time later, Nightwing stands in the morgue with the investigator and the body seems strange to him, as he explains that there are no dusts or debris on it, meaning that it had been placed there after the building had fallen. The investigator also explains that the king had been seen in Latvana two days ago. Yeah, there's more to this, because the victim has been dead for weeks, Nightwing says quietly. And then he looks at the investigator who can't seem to stop grinning. Why are you smiling? He asks, and she shakes her head, turning away. I'm sorry. I know it's a bit inappropriate, but I like a good mystery. She says, with Nightwing apologizing for the country's loss, asking the woman if she'd ever met the king but that's when he's struck from behind and slams into the ground. 
I wouldn't say I knew the king, the grinning man says as his image shifts and he takes on the appearance of Nightwing. But I did meet him once, he says, looking down on the hero and continuing to grin. Later, one of the morgue cabinets is banging until it's finally popped open with Nightwing's Escrima sticks. Oracle! He gasps as he finally frees himself. Over at their apartment, Barbara is cuddling with Haley in bed, the dog snuggling against her as she reaches for the comms, shocked to hear Dick's voice as he asks, where is Starfire and Raven? They're headed to Beast Boy's house. You're not with them? There's no way Raven and Starfire would have just left me. Something's wrong. I need Cyborg now, Dick tells her. Moments later, Oracle is relaying the message to Vic, and he boom tubes to the morgue. What's happening? I'm not sure, but I have a suspicion. I think Olivia's in danger. As soon as we get there, find Raven, Beast Boy, and Starfire. I'll go after Olivia, Nightwing tells Vic as they boom tube to the house. Inside of Garth's house, Nightwing wakes Olivia, telling her that she is in danger, that they need to go. The sleepy girl takes the hero's hand as he leads her outside, but she's shocked to find Gar knocked out on the stairs. He'll be okay. They're after you, not him. Nightwing says as he takes her hand again, leading her into the woods. They duck undercover as Cyborg flies overhead. Isn't Cyborg one of your friends? Olivia asks, and Nightwing nods as they continue forward. Yes, but the person who's after you is a shapeshifter. He can be anyone, Nightwing tells her. That's the moment that a second Nightwing steps out of the trees, blocking their path. Yeah, that's what I thought, Nightwing says, raising his sticks. Olivia, stay behind me. This man's an imposter, the first Nightwing says, but the second Nightwing cocks an eyebrow at him. Am I? Name my dog. The first Nightwing doesn't answer, but the grin never leaves his face as he rushes to the real Nightwing who easily blocks the attack and hits him with stun pellets and a zap to the face. That the best you got? <laughs> the grinning man asks, but Nightwing then looks at Olivia. Olivia, I promise he's not me. I swear I'm Bitewing, he tells her. Olivia doesn't hesitate, punching the grinning man in the back, knocking him through the air, sending him through several trees. The powered assassin gets up on his feet. All right, seems like I was missing some information about you, girl. He rushes forward, grabbing her arm, leaping up and flying away into the air. But they're suddenly stopped by Raven, Starfire, and Cyborg. Everyone's staring at each other for a moment. Uh, I fly now, the grinning man says, still in the disguise of Nightwing. The heroes stare at him and sigh. Fine, clearly time to abort this mission. The grinning man says before tossing Olivia away, but none of the heroes move. Aren't you gonna like catch her? The grinning man asks. Was hurling a little girl through the sky your entire escape plan? Cyborg asks. Meanwhile, a short distance away, Donna Troy is flying through the air with Olivia in her arms. The heroes hit the grinning man with a burst of energy, throwing him into the ground. With his disguise now fully gone, the assassin gets back to his feet, but the flash is suddenly there. You tried to run? Yeah, you don't get to run from this. Wally says as he punches the man in the face, knocking him out. It's later that the grinning man is now tied to a chair, where the Titans begin to question about how he got his powers and why he was after Olivia. He explains that he was once a really bad criminal who liked disguises. But he was approached by Neron, one of the Lords of Hell. Neron offered him powers for his soul, and the grinning man wanted to be powerful, able to fly, and a true master of disguise. And I wanted something to put a smile on my face, the Grinning Man says, but Neron was true to his word. The Grinning Man no longer had any features of his own except for the grin that never leaves his face. The heroes are shocked that Neron is even involved, and they move into another room of the house to discuss the matter. Why is Blockbuster's daughter so important? Cyborg questions, but Raven explains that Neron merely doesn't want to be seen as weak. That Olivia is merely the soul that is owed. I don't understand how an agreement with a father can be used against the daughter. I want to see that contract, Nightwing says. So Raven agrees, suggesting that they all break into hell. Excuse me? Garth gasps in disbelief, and Raven tells them that they can break into Neron's fortress to see the contract, while Donna and Starfire take Olivia to Themyscira for safety. Nightwing nods, looking at his friends. Let it settle. The Titans are going to steal from hell. Later, a portal opens up and the four heroes step into the abysmal landscape of hell. Welcome to hell, Raven tells her friends. And as the heroes press forward to Neron's fortress, Raven casts a spell that shields their eyes from the horrors around them. The place is full of suffering and you're all heroes. You'll want to help. You can't help anyone. She tells them as they move. Above, Donna, Starfire, and Batgirl arrive at the island of the Amazons with Olivia. 
but the little girl is pouting, believing that she doesn't need all of them to protect her. Okay, well, we're not here for your protection, Batgirl tells her, and Donna nods, stepping forward. Nightwing tells me you're very strong. You want to learn how to fight? Donna asks, and Olivia jumps up and down, cheering. Oh my god, yes, please! She shouts. Meanwhile, down in hell, the heroes have arrived at Neuron's fortress, led by Blaze, a demon who seeks Neuron's throne and agrees to help the Titans. Nightwing decides that their best course of action is to sneak in. The four heroes quickly make their way to the top of the tower, where Cyborg finds all of his files are in computers from the early 90s. My god, this is hell, he whispers, but Vic manages to cut through the clutter and malware until he finally finds a folder on Olivia's soul. They move through the archives and find the glowing scroll, where they learn that Olivia's mother was Jezebel Jet. You know the name? Vic asks, and Nightwing nods, explaining that Jet was once one of the lovers of Batman. She was also murdered by Talia al Ghul. So that's it? Valid contract? Garth asks, but Nightwing shakes his head. No, I think I can get around it. We need bureaucracy, and I need to talk to my sister, Melinda. I think we can save Olivia's soul with the local government. Meanwhile, over at Iron Heights prison, the grinning man is sitting quietly in his cell, but Neron appears before him. You dialed? Do the Titans know of my involvement? The grinning man explains that he told them everything. Neron knows that he can't attack the mascara outright, but he can send the grinning man and other villains whose souls he's trapped. So over on the island of the Amazons, the heroes are training Olivia to use her strength, but they're interrupted by Wonder Woman, who offers to spar with the young girl. Olivia, let's see what you can do. She says with a wide grin. At the other hero's urging, Olivia launches herself forward, punching Wonder Woman. But Diana catches the blow in her fist and leans in with a wide grin. I wasn't ready for you last time. You got a cheap shot in. Wonder Woman whispers and she pulls the girl forward, kicking her hard, sending her bouncing across the fields. The other heroes all rush forward, but suddenly fall to the ground, clutching their heads. Psychic attack! Batgirl calls out. Wonder Woman's image begins to shift as the grinning man reveals himself, motioning over his shoulder as the ground shakes beneath them and Dr. Polaris and Gorilla Grodd reveal themselves. Meanwhile, over at the Bloodhaven Town Hall, Nightwing is finishing up the paperwork when they get the alert about the attack on Themyscira. He tells his friends to go, he'll finish it up. Raven opens up a portal and they all leave. Nightwing looks up as Neuron appears in the shadowy couch across the room. I thought Raven would never leave. He stands walking over to Nightwing. Doing some superheroic paperwork. Nightwing smiles standing, offering the paperwork to Neron, explaining that the contract for Olivia's soul is now invalid since it hasn't been signed by her legal guardian, which is now Nightwing. The Demon Lord sighs. Nightwing, if you let this go, we can come to an arrangement. He offers Nightwing anything that he wants, knowing that he desires the power to save humanity. So he waves his hand at the hero. Let me give you a taste of what I can give you. The power to change the world. In a flash of light, Nightwing is given superpowers as he floats into the air, feeling his new strength and abilities that flow through his body. Floating in the air, he looks down at his body. What have you done, Neron? He demands, but Neron merely explains that he has given Nightwing the power to change the world for two hours. You're a bright boy, you can do anything. I would remind you that your friends are under attack in Themyscira. Nightwing doesn't hesitate, flying away, crossing the world in a matter of moments. He arrives at the island, grabbing Gorilla Grodd, flying him to a deserted island so that his friends can continue the fight without the psychic attack. By the time he's returned, the rest of the Titans have beaten Dr. Polaris and the Gritting Man, and everyone looks up to Nightwing in surprise. Heh, <laughs> I fly now, he tells them with a smile, explaining to them the deal that Neron offered, and that he has two hours with the powers. Two hours? What are you going to do? Garth asks him. With that, Nightwing heads out. He travels to see his friend, the Flash, and is finally able to keep up with his super speed. Any immovable objects you could use an unstoppable force for? Nightwing asks. Wally smiles, leading his friend to Bangkok, where they dismantle an illegal water capture and provide water to the thousands downstream. Next, Nightwing heads to Metropolis, where he flies up to meet Superman, offering his hand. Nightwing quickly explains his powers. I just wanted to say thank you and shake your hand. Superman proudly takes at shaking it. Good grip, he says with a smile, leading Nightwing into space so that the young hero can look down on the planet and see everything that they are protecting. Good to have this perspective, Nightwing admits, as Superman explains to him that the world is worth protecting against the threats from outside and in. 
that not everyone on the planet will always like everything that he does. I don't know, I'm pretty likable, Nightwing reminds him. But their talk is interrupted by Oracle, who warns him of another attack of Themyscira. Nightwing arrives during the battle, seeing Miron's demon horde attacking. He leaps in to beat a few demons, and quickly grabs Olivia, flying her away to safety. In moments, they're flying over the mountains. But that's when Neron's voice calls out to him. That's far enough, hero! He snaps his fingers, instantly taking away Nightwing's power. Nightwing cradles Olivia in his body as they both fall out of the sky, landing hard in the snow. Looking up, Nightwing sees the Demon Lord standing over them, a glowing contract in his hand. That power can return. I will give it back. You have my word. Just give me the girl, Neron says, reminding Dick that it isn't even his soul that Neron is asking him to give up. But Nightwing refuses. Neron sighs in irritation. Do you not have a pragmatic bone in your whole body? With the power that I'm offering you, you can make the lives of billions better. Nightwing shakes his head, drawing his Escrima sticks. I say, Nightwing is awesome. He says, activating the last of the magic powers that Night Might left in the weapons. Go to hell, Neron. Nightwing says as he strikes the Demon Lord with the weapons, turning him into a massive tentacle beast that can barely move. Neron bellows in anger, disappearing, returning to the bowels of hell. Olivia rushes over to Nightwing, shocked that he would give up that power for her. It's okay. We'll look after the world just fine, he tells her. Later, the Titans stand on the beach of Themyscira where Diana offers Olivia a home on the island where she can be trained by Amazons. She accepts the offer, and Nightwing gives her a plaque, telling her that she is now an honorary titan. Until the day you can uh, step up and join us, of course, Garth reminds her. Olivia accepts with a smile, telling them that her superhero name will be Nightbuster, because she knows that combining Nightwing's name with Blockbuster would really piss her dad off. So the titans all wave goodbye as Donna leads Olivia to her new home and family. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. Olivia calls out to her friends. An hour later, Neron is hiding in his fortress, trying to pull his humanoid form back together, but he's interrupted as Raven stalks into his chambers. Nightwing beat you, she points out, and Neron shakes his head, telling her that it was merely one to fight and he will win the war. Raven refuses to allow Olivia to live her life with the threat of a demon lord hanging over her head. She raises her hands, her dark magic swirling around her. I don't want hell, but I'm taking it away from you, she says as the magical energy expands and explodes through the fortress. As the smoke clears, Neron is collapsed to the ground. He's yours, Blaze, Raven calls over her shoulder. The female demon that helped from earlier steps into the throne world. And the underworld is yours until the next challenger, Raven says as she turns to leave. But Blaze stops her, pointing out that there is something wrong with Raven. I can feel it. I'm not sure what it is, but part of you is missing. Raven pauses for a moment, but she doesn't answer, stalking out of hell to return to the mortal world. And there you have it. Nightwing can fly now, but come on, admit it. When you saw the title, you thought stupid, and you were going to write a comment down below about how dumb this was. But when the story played out, basically it just shows you how awesome Nightwing really is. That he would give up that power for one girl's soul. I hope you guys enjoy this, and don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Tons more DC and stuff going on. We're covering Night Terrors and a bunch of other events. I would love to have you guys here, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know what's up.